What's up, YouTube? ODST General back again with some U-Boat. And uh, it's been a hot second since we played, guys, and here we are on a stormy night in our port. Um, so the last time we played U-Boat was... I don't even remember how long ago. That's how long it's been. I have no idea when we last played this. Um, however, patch B129 came out. Now that probably means nothing to a lot of you guys, but B129 is a huge patch that's been under work for quite a while. Uh, it adds things like milk cows. No, not that kind of cow. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with milk cows, basically, actually I won't be able to show you from here, but they're submarines that the Germans utilize to transport supplies to other submarines. That way, uh, they didn't have to risk surface ships getting sunk while trying to deliver supplies to submarines or potentially even followed or whatever else. Um, so submarines were basically would like hang out, you know, at designated spots or whatever. At least that's how it works here. And have supplies. Now, you only start off with one milk cow. And actually, you can't even see it on the map by default. Um, it hangs out around here somewhere. I can't remember the exact location. If I go to my headquarters, I can see it. And you can actually choose to move your um, marker here. Or, uh, like, the location of the milk cow. If you send somebody into headquarters to, like, convince them. We don't really want to do that. Now, I do have a little bit of money, baby, before we leave here. I want to actually take a look real quick. Uh, let's look at recruitment and see if we can actually afford to recruit anybody. Uh, we got a lot of people. I think these are all just regular random crewmen. These are the officers. Can we afford any officers? These are the officers we have. Kids are screaming outside. Hopefully this uh, AI thing is working correctly and you can't hear that. Um, I'm not sure what this icon is here. Zero out of eight. Oh, what did I just do? So this is the active crew I have. Oh, and these are the actual crewmen. Okay. So I've got all these guys boarded. I don't know what the squads are. This is new. This is interesting. Oh, you can actually set up shifts and stuff now. And you can add like specific sailors to work under officers. That's actually really awesome. I didn't know you could do that. I don't know if this is part of B129 or not. Uh, and then it looks like there's certain tasks it says tasks but these look like skill set charts basically so these are like different things these guys benefit at or skilled at um so obviously our watch officer quint he's our captain is um you know he's good at calming people down he's got good observational skills and his navigation kind of you know george weber is a bit better um and yeah, so that's kind of neat. And then it looks like there's a new shift. So I can actually switch like officer shifts and stuff. So I could have these guys on like alternating shifts and stuff. I wonder. So is this the time that they do this or something maybe? I don't know. Or like the priority at which they do those tasks on their shift. I don't. I'm kind of unclear. I need to learn this system. This is, like, really fascinating. And then this is the actual, like, crew breakdown for the shift. So here you've got your morning shift, you've got your uh, your evening shift, and your night shift, and crew rotation. So in theory, you could, like, you could actually make, like, a four, four, like, four time shift or whatever and have, like, lesser crews and stuff. Um, it's very interesting. And these are the times at which the shifts are actually going. How do I recruit another officer? Unless I just can't yet. I might not be able to recruit another officer yet. I feel like he used to be able to, like, right offhand. It says I can recruit two more crew members, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um... So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab ourselves a mission. Now, one of the cool things with B129 is that there is actual missions that you can go to. So I think I'm currently assigned to, assigned to set up a weather station. That's actually broken, so I've got to cancel that mission. 
So, if I go in here, there's a number of different missions I can take. I can uh, join Port of Kiel Flotilla, which is, like, down here. Uh, the Black Pit, which is essentially like the old school patrol missions. Uh, an actual patrol mission. In the Celtic Sea. Uh, attack the Scapa Flow, which is a huge fleet, and this is a giant dreadnought. This thing's like super big. This is actually a pretty cool mission. So I tried to record this video. I had OBS crash, and yeah, we lost the video, unfortunately. So this was the mission I tried. I died horribly. Um, I was going to record it. It was pretty cool. Some Something happened, and my ship hit the bottom of the ocean. I took on some water, and I could not escape. And unfortunately, I ended up stuck at the bottom. So I just tried, like, all these boats were just coming on top of me. So I just, uh, Hail Mary, I shut off everything, hoping that maybe they would pass over me. They did not. They dropped depth charges like crazy and then continued to drop them on me. Uh, so then they're setting up this weather island or this weather station up here, which would be kind of cool. Because I kind of want to do missions up in, the, like, the North Atlantic. I think it would be really awesome. But uh, this mission's bug, so we're not going to do it. And then a Enigma box recovery from a sunken submarine off the uh, coast of the UK. But uh, we don't have diving equipment. So really, we're just going to start off basically like we did initially, which is going to the Black Pit sector here. So, again, this is basically just your standard, um, like your standard, uh, survey patrol mission type of deal. And we don't... Certain mission objectives have to be fulfilled before undocking. What mission objectives do we need to do before undocking? Um, the other thing that is an issue is that I can't get out of here out of the map. I hit the tilde key, that's why. Oof. Okay. Um. Hmm. There we go. I don't know why I wouldn't leave on the mission. Alright, so we've undocked. Uh, we're going to leave under the cover of night. It is very dark out. Not something I necessarily want to leave under the port in, in a sense. In a way, you kind of want to leave in weather like this. So, like, this is perfect because, you know, spies might have an information of submarines leaving. But, I mean, it's going to be so hard for anybody to see the submarine actually getting out of here. I'm going to turn our spotlight on. First person mode is our... Uh... Captain here. I don't know what we're getting like into or stuck on here. I feel like I'm crouching down or something. I really don't know what's going on here. Oh, there's a flashlight. I'm like crouched down, but there's also a guy standing there too. Okay, well, let's, uh... Bring her down to one. I do have collision damage on. Now, one issue that I was running into while I was out in the uh, the port trying to attack the enemy fleet is I kept taking damage to my conning tower and the stuff on top, and it seemed like collision damage. I didn't seem to be hitting anything like depth charges or anything, to my knowledge. It was just minor damage, but I don't know what it was coming from. So, we're going to go ahead and head out into the map. So, we're up here uh, north of the Netherlands and... Uh, West of Denmark and stuff. I disabled my clock. I don't know how to re-enable it. 
Oh, it's down there now. So, unfortunately, we're still in the shallows. Now, they did add 140 times things, so if you're far enough away from land, you do have that as an option when you're in orbit view, but if you're in map view, I mean, that 6,500 times speed is definitely the way to go. It's the way to travel. Now, I haven't gotten into crew rotations or anything, obviously, like I said. I didn't even realize that was a thing until just now. Um, so that's definitely something I want to explore, see if maybe there's a, a more efficient uh, crew pattern or definitely a, like a readiness pattern I can look at in certain situations. So we're just going to go ahead and go in the bottom here. And actually we'll probably just follow on the, uh, the lines between these two and straddle them. And then once we get in there, we're going to go ahead and get our... Uh, Officer on the hydrophone, a radio man on the hydrophone. Oh. Okay, so, um, t -t 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 where are you? I want you right here. Let's get you an extra officer to help out our crew member. So one of the cool things is most of the crewmen actually now use, uh, set uniforms and everything too. Now I did change the names of these crew members but that was uh, after actually bef yeah after I saved and so the names reverted so I have Quint. Quint is obviously a, a reference to a certain uh, movie and if you guys know what movie Quint is from good job proud of you you guys get some uh, internet points you know of course it's like whose line is anyways points don't matter um, but you do get some internet points for that for knowing who Quint is and then uh, we had Ninja Potatoes as our chief engineer who is now Bender again and then we had uh, Clover Percival as my uh, my first officer so unfortunately that is not the case anymore and uh, now it's just Quint but uh, we're gonna go ahead we're preparing the ship to dive our a uh, couple of our guys down here a couple of our uh, Crewmen, one of our NCOs and uh, just one of the other crewmen have gone down to the uh, valves to prepare us to uh, to dive down and everything. And the deck is awash now, it looks like. It might just be that the seas are rough. I'm not really sure. Oh, no, we're diving down. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot to shut the spotlight off. That is... Not ideal. <laughs> that was a, a big oopsie. This is definitely going to make us more spotable. Gee, I wonder what that giant light is under the water. Hmm. Well, we're underwater now. I'm mostly diving down anyways to make use of our... Sonar. Now we aren't actually in our point yet, but I do see. Oh man, we're surrounded by ships right now. Uh, inaccurate contact. This unit may be anywhere inside of uh, or in a radius of 16 kilometers. So this could be anywhere in here. Really, we don't actually know yet for sure. Um, so let's go ahead. See if we can increase the uh, the likelihood of finding this. We got guys heating up torpedoes. Let's um. We'll actually just leave them be for right now as they are. Set an interception course. Seven kilometers. It's still inaccurate, but it's getting closer. Okay, um, so we've actually now got the ships in kind of in range that we can kind of identify. It looks like it's just a single ship. Nope, two ships. So we still don't know what they are. 
Uh, they're coming into hydrophone range right now. Um, it's still kind of awkward because I still have my searchlight on. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. I don't even know what kind of ships these are. So we can hear the uh, the screws from the ships on the hydrophone. They sound like they're off of our starboard side. Which, yep, that uh, seems about right. Well, we'll just uh, we'll continue on our course. I'm a little bit worried about having that spotlight on now. But I'm guessing that they're... Oh, man, they're in such a weird pattern, though, for cargo ships is the thing. Frank P. Walsh. That does not... Well, Rio Mendoza. That's a freighter. An American freighter. And uh, I'll be honest, I actually don't know what country flag that is or what Mariner flag that one is. Um, so this is... 41. Hmm. I don't... We're going to try something here. I, I don't know how this is going to work out. This is going to be a little bit questionable. Blow the tanks. Faster, faster. Perception not possible. So, one of the other things that you can do now is that you can actually board um freighters and stuff like that and actually check their cargo manifest and stuff like that and make sure that they are who like they say they are and see if they're carrying like the manifest they claim and stuff like that and potentially you know even like uh, get supplies off of them Uh, I need an intercept course is what I need. Faster, faster. I also have to sneeze. Set a course to these coordinates. Ooh, that was close. Okay, so we can now interact with them. Let's take a look. The freighter is unarmed and seems to not be escorted. While it sails under a neutral flag, ideally we should investigate what it's carrying in its destination to ensure that they are not smugglers heading to an enemy port. So see, once again, it is an American flag. It's before we, you know, we're, we're worried about America or anything technically, but they are definitely a strong possibility of them taking supplies to like the British or something like that. So... We are going to send a delegation to the freighter. Now, things could happen. Um, things could potentially go bad. Now, our captain, Quint, actually speaks English. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to send Quint. And uh, we're going to send Quint out wearing a helmet because he is our captain. We don't want him getting injured. Um, now, can I send... I can't. So I guess this is like survivors or whatever. I can't send a crewman out. So it's got to be another officer. Um, hmm. Let's send out auto. And we'll send out auto with a car 98. 
and I, I guess this I don't know there isn't much reason to send honestly a third guy because we can't arm him or anything so let's go ahead and we'll actually we're able to send out a few other crewmen so we'll send out a full contingent crewmen with our officers to board this ship so looks like it's about seven seconds or so before they actually board the ship from our submarine to the american freighter okay so they've boarded the freighter merchant ship deck your crew climbs the deck with some help from the cargo ship crew after that you are welcomed by the ship's captain but he tries to communicate in english and doesn't speak german too well uh, luckily, David Peters speaks fluently in English, so there's no language barrier. After exchanging pleasantries, he invites you to a private room in the deck house. Except, uh, your officers sit with the captain in the ship's galley. Oh, interesting. Okay. After a short, small talk, the captain asks them to state what do they need. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Yes, the captain for documents that state what cargo is loaded on his ship and where they are heading. He was ready for that since he has these documents already prepared and hands them to you right away. It looks a bit nervous when you carefully analyze the document contents. According to this document, his ship is directed at Port of Lisbon and transports utilities. Uh, if these documents are correct, the ship is not involved in a war effort and sinking it could lead to a diplomatic incident of some degree. Um, hmm. he does seem nervous, but then again, like I would be nervous too with a, uh, submarine captain boarding my vessel. So let's right now, let's see if we can just accept him. I don't know if I'll be able to go back and like, be like, Hey, these documents don't match, but for the time being, let's go ahead and accept his documents and search the cargo hold. Um, okay. So. Uh, it definitely takes some time for them to search the cargo hold, as you guys can see. Uh, so, I mean, it, it even searches. That's kind of, kind of crazy. Like, it searches in real time, so you definitely want to, like, fast forward the time. Um. Of course, it's not passing, like, ridiculously fast, even though we're at still times 140, you know, the minutes are passing, um, you know, reasonably slow. I mean, it's still, you know, it's still passing by, you know, fast, but relative to, like, normal submarine travel, it's slow. So, I mean, progress is going up, seems to be getting faster and faster and faster here. Don't know what to expect, like, if, if they are carrying contraband, they might try to attack us, I don't know what to expect here. Um, so an officer from your group looked around the freighter accompanied by a talkative sailor who speaks some German. He shared his view on the war and told us about, or told about his uncle that married a woman from Hamburg. Uh, so they haven't found anything in the cargo hold. Um, so I can't seem to pressure the captain on that, so I guess we're just going to go ahead and return. So we're going to go ahead and send uh, headquarters an update that we had just spotted that guy and everything. Um, they are still here. We're going to go ahead and just return to our ship. We're going to leave them be. Um, to be honest, I'm still a little bit suspicious because the captain was nervous and everything, but again, I mean, you'd kind of be nervous too. Now there is the other ship who seems to have just like kept going. He's like, I'm not bothering with this. They didn't ask me to stop. So we're going to go ahead and try to run the other ship down here. If we can, I can see his smokestack off in the distance there. It looks like actually we'll, uh,
And we're going to update headquarters again that we had performed a full inspection of the vessel. We're going to go ahead and keep our spotlight on. We'll try to remember to turn it off before we uh, finish up the inspection. But we're going to check the other ship. We aren't technically inside of our mission objective yet. But, I mean, these are, of course, targets of interest. You know, well, at least one of these is neutral. Like I said, I'm not sure what flag that is. I feel bad for not knowing what flag that is. Um... <clears throat> But I'm not familiar with it. I know some of these use, like, actual, like, naval flags and stuff. I've seen, like, variations on flags I'm, like, familiar with. But, you know, of course, these flags have, you know, changed. Some of them, at least, have, like, changed over decades and stuff like that. Um, our chief engineer is pretty tired, so we're going to go ahead and send him to bed. Uh, the captain... Honestly, might as well stay up. I don't know if how long it's going to take us to catch up with this other ship here. Change course. Change course. Yeah, I know detection. I'm trying to catch up with him. Change course. Change course. We're slowing down. Oh man, they almost hit us, I think. Uh, that was kind of a little, little questionable trying to approach these ships. Definitely something you probably want to actually do in manual uh, when approaching them. So the freighter is unarmed, seems to be escorted, or not to be escorted. Uh, it is under a neutral flag again. Um, so let's go ahead. Once again, we're going to send a delegation. We'll send the captain back, even though he is tired. Oh, I can't send him, even though he's tired, because he is tired. Ooh. Um, mm, that's... Okay, well, let's try to send our radio man. I'm a little bit wary about that because he's our only one. And we'll send our other officer and we'll actually arm the officer because the uh, the radio man we want to try and keep on board. We'll send a full contingent of uh, crewmen again to support our officers just to uh, try and keep them safe, try and get this done as fast as possible. Uh, don't know what language these guys are going to be speaking Cold welcome from the crew, cargo ship's crew. What do you want? Ask the captain in German without exchanging any pleasantries. This is a neutral ship and you shouldn't be here. Uh, ask the captain for documents that describe what type of cargo they have. So once again, he's a bit nervous. Um... So supposedly he's transporting tobacco. He is kind of a dick. He does speak German, so we're going to... Uh, so we could we can make up claims. Okay, so there's a 35% chance to hear the truth due to having armed officers. It gets increased slightly, it looks like. So 45% chance. Uh, so it's like 50-50, we'll hear the truth. Um... And we don't have any, our officer here that we have with us doesn't have uh, <laughs> navigation or, I'm not sure what this one is, merchant. Unfortunately, yeah, none of my current officers have merchant on this playthrough. <laughs> Darn kids get me sick again. We're going to leave it be. I'm a little bit weary. Let's just search cargo hold. We'll do it the right way. See what comes of it. Oh, sorry guys. Captain confirms that you can have a look if that's needed. Invites you down to follow him. So again, we're just going to go ahead and throw it at times 140 speed. And uh, we'll see what comes of the search here. Yeah, I mean, so it looks like it's actually just... Well, no, the, the guy on the left, even though he's wearing the same coat, is our... Uh, our actual officer, I think, so... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so it's our officers and our radio man are all searching for stuff here. 
performance is slow. I don't know if it's because we're lacking two additional officers or if there's another reason that this is taking so long. Um, there might be uh, training that we can do, skills that our officers can develop to more quickly search cargo bays. Yeah. <sighs> All right, once again, nothing suspicious found. Uh, no goods that we can actually view. I'm going to go back up to the captain's office and return to our ship. Uh, radio officer is ready to go to bed. Yeah, this missions really seem to take it out of your officers, man. He's pretty tired. But before he can go to bed, we're going to go ahead and have him just report back to uh, headquarters that we had searched another vessel. We'll get a few more points, a little bit more money out of it. It's not a huge amount of money, unfortunately. We didn't really find anything worth value, but it was, you know, it was basically our way. We were already there after searching the other vessel. It was kind of fun. Um, we do need to get back down here, but given the time in the video, I think we're basically just going to get to our point. Uh, we're going to send this guy to bed. He needs to sleep pretty uh, pretty desperately right now. So we'll send our officer to bed. And we're going to have our mechanic take over on the diesel engines. Have our captain hop on the navigation table because I don't think anybody's been on navigation for a hot second. And we're actually going to go up and also, I lied, have the captain shut off the uh, searchlight here. Faster, faster. We got a detection marker, but. I'm pretty sure it's just the uh, the ships we're already dealing with here. Actually, is is it the same ships? No, those were different ships. Those were British ships. Oh man, I thought those were the same ships. Well, that's fine. I mean, I, it's not exactly fine, but. That's okay. Our crew is tired. You know, half of our crew is exhausted from doing those searches, and uh, they need to rest up. Everybody needs some time sleeping and stuff, so the captain's pretty drained, and he's, uh, he's having to do navigation and stuff like that. So we are inside the uh, patrol room or patrol area here. And... Uh, we're actually going to park like right here. We're going to report our position and then we're going to end the video. Alright, so our captain's going to go ahead and send that. It's pretty dark out, so our visibility is still quite limited. Uh, definitely would be a lot better off using the hydrophone, that's for sure. Now let's go ahead and switch this over to the uh, electric engines just for the time being to uh, make a little bit more use, efficient use of our uh, diesel. Because, you know, while we're using diesel, the diesel engine's going to recharge the electric battery anyways, so we might as well use the electric battery to extend out our range and try to make the most of our fuel. But basically the plan would be to come up here, I'll just come up, basically just run zigzag patterns on these lines here, and just try to check, you know, two grid squares at once, basically. There might be a little bit of it that goes unchecked, but I think for the most part that's the best way to do it. And we're going to probably have to stop and go a lot just because we're going to need our... Uh, radio man on the hydrophone to really do this properly. All right, guys, but uh, we are at the point pretty much right now that I wanted to be at. So we're going to go ahead and 
bring her to a full stop in just a kilometer here. Get another kilometer and that's close enough. So it's still uh, it's still quite late at night. You know, it's still very dark out. But that is it for the time of the video, as far as the video is concerned. Um, we're going to go ahead and we'll pick it up another time here, guys. I do wish we could have had a little bit more action, but it was kind of fun getting to actually board a ship. Because, like I said, most of these new mechanics I haven't actually had a chance to do. So we're coming up. We'll have the, uh, the sunrise here on our submarine. And uh, it's going to be glorious. The Red Devil. It's a pretty cool submarine. It's just on easy mode. There's a lot of different submarines and story modes and stuff, which is pretty cool, too. It would have been nice to see some different types of submarines, too, at this point. Uh, with these other story modes having like different different submarine classes and stuff. Maybe we'll see a DLC for that. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any workshop content for it at this point. I think there was workshop content where there was at least other submarines, like the exterior models for like different classes that you could at least come across. But it would be kind of cool to see something besides the Type 7. Uh, nonetheless, though, really glorious stuff. Just absolutely gorgeous looking uh, ending here to this video, too, as the, uh, the sun comes up in the background behind us. Sunrises our submarine just in the middle of our patrol area. Too far out for enemy planes. It's great. Just gotta worry about some enemy ships. But the chances of running into an enemy fleet out here are pretty small, so we'll see what happens. Who knows? This next video could go anywhere, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one, though. I hope you enjoyed boarding some uh, vessels and checking cargo manifests. Maybe not the most exciting thing, you know, but it was fun nonetheless. Alright, guys, take it easy. I'll see you all in the next one.